Welcome back, guys, to more creepy tech talks, and that's Daivo. We need to talk about the smiling dog. The smiling dog is a demonic creature that looks like a dog but has human teeth. Photos of this creature were sent to people all over the world. And once a photo was seen, the smile dog would enter the viewer's dreams. And in the dream, you'll feel a need to ask the creature one question. What do you want? Then the smile dog will always reply with spread the word. After that, you'll have three days to grant the smile dog's wishes. And if you don't send any videos or photos of the smile dog to someone else, the photo you received will start to deform. Show Showing you a much more disturbing version of the smile dog that some people think is its true form. Some people have even said the smile dog's nightmares are so bad that its victims avoid sleeping altogether, weakening their mind and making them even more vulnerable till the smile dog comes out of their dreams and into their reality to further torment them. So send this video to someone else to spread the word of the smile dog. Okay, so going to contacts, turkey neck Joe, check. Nancy, you're joking me, check. Ash's knob, check. Resident Evil, Selinsky, check. Camel Toe, Harris, check. And then send. And sent. Okay, so I know for a fact that they're not going to spread the word. The only thing they're going to spread in this lies in the seat. You won't even be able to guess why this is happening. We'll be right back. So we are just now stepping into 5G, but guess what? Huawei unveils world's first 5.5G network. And yes, that's how it's pronounced. Pretty weird, right? Anyways, gotta love 5G. And that right there brings me right back to the helicopter. So you can see down there, this is from the BBC. And they say that the gigahertz from 5G waves can bring down planes and helicopters. I mean, look at it. So what you're seeing here is quite literally a helicopter being taken down by 5G. That's some crazy stuff. I don't know if I want that outside of my house. insane so now with their new 5.5g from Huawei I can tell you for sure I don't want that crap near me obviously if it takes down helicopters what else does it do what's it do to humans it's all alleged it's all speculation you know whatever the bull crap with it you get it yeah I don't want it I don't want it you know these 5g towers may be able to bring down a helicopter that's half a ton of weight but it'll definitely not affect your body in the slightest so don't be worrying too much, it's not like 5G has been causing cancer and viruses since 2020, so you should be safe. Dead on. Here are some of the creepiest conspiracy theories. Only two months before 9-11, the World Trade Center was privatized and sold to Larry Silverstein. Every single morning he ate breakfast in the North Tower on the 91st floor, but not on 9-11. His wife made him an emergency doctor's appointment that day. He also had bought an insurance plan that fortunately covered terrorism. And after the attack, he took the insurance company to court. Silverstein won and was paid double, being awarded a total of $4.55 billion. This might be the largest insurance fraud in history, and he's still a free man. So was it just a coincidence that he wasn't there the day of the attacks? Next up, there's a famous story where a mom in Thailand wanted to be reincarnated as a boy, so she had her only daughter mark a line on her neck. After she passed away, her daughter gave birth to a boy with a similar birthmark on the back of his neck. Do we think the mom was reincarnated as the son? And lastly, according to the Flat Earth Society, a bunch of idiots, the most obvious proof of our planet's flatness can be found by looking at the horizon. People who believe the Earth is flat are just dumb. Point blank end the period. So let's think about this for a minute. The World Trade Center becomes privatized. Larry Silverstein ends up buying the whole place and then ends up eating food on the North Tower every single morning. Besides, what the heck, I'll go ahead and buy some tires insurance just in the off chance. And then the one morning he goes out to get his foot seen to, he deems it as a medical emergency. Then the Twin Towers come down and he's over $4 billion richer. I mean, some people will look at that and say, oh, you know, he's very lucky. But I would look at that and say, listen, that's really suspicious. Here's what they don't tell you about Pangea. Africa was shrunk 35 to 40 percent for the drawings. Mexico and Central America are completely gone. Here's a map of Pangaea from McGraw Hill Earth Science 1973. Where's Mexico? Where's all of Central America? I mean, I've been to most of those, or many of those uh, countries, flown over all of them. Some pretty good size. So they just simply take them out because it makes the continents not fit. So anything that, you know, makes a theory not work, well, let's eliminate it. It's just not, that's not the way science works. They also don't tell you, Europe and South America were rotated counterclockwise. Africa was rotated clockwise. Notice the way they would have to twist to make them fit. South America twisted one way, Africa twisted the other way. They also don't tell you the obvious. <laughs> to me, I don't know how anybody can overlook this one. If you take the water out of the oceans, 
there is dirt underneath. Right in there? I mean, when you look at a world, you say, wow, this is water, this is land. Well, that doesn't mean there's nothing under the water, right? I bet you could point out that the opposite sides of most rivers in the world are parallel, right? Does that prove the sides broke apart? Uh, no, it's a low place full of water. <laughs> That's all it is. So the continents are not floating around like lily pads in a bathtub, okay? They are connected. They're, you know, people say, do you think the continents were once connected? I say, what do you mean? They're still connected. <laughs> it's underwater, but so? They're still connected. What do you mean? Were they connected? Yeah, they still are. I agree here. And if you do some research, you'll see there's a lot of lost cities from all around the world. In fact, Ireland at one point was undersea level for many of the years before it popped up and became populated. But for those of you who don't know, that's Kent Hovind. A um, very interesting guy. So definitely look him up when you get the chance. So the White House is unable to track billions of dollars sent to Ukraine. And the U.S. Treasury is unable to track trillions of dollars in pandemic spending. Yet the IRS wants to know where your $5.38 is or you're going to jail. We are peasants until proven guilty. And then when we're proven guilty, we're just a thieving peasant. As always guys, be sure to do your own research with any of the clips that you find in any of these shows. But what I will say is some archaeologists did find a cluster of lost cities in the Amazon at the start of the year. They found a network of different roads, um, neighborhoods, gardens and that sort of thing. But we all know that there's a lot of lost civilizations uh, from around the world. <laughs> hey, me. You can slide on high. Do you know what I say? If you get rid of the girl, you get rid of the ghost. Job done. Sorted. This is the ultimate conspiracy theory, according to Joe Rogan. If you're a conspiracy theorist, yeah, this is this is the real conspiracy. The conspiracy is have as many social problems as possible to that people distra get distracted yeah. by, that people concentrate on, whether it's a, a pandemic, whether it's masks, vaccines, pride trans movement drag show sponsor drag shows for kids if you want people to get mad and want people to get distracted right right sponsor Let them that. focus on that. get get yeah. people to think that it's a good idea to do that and and watch watch the outrage you know get people to think that the oceans are going to be boiling in five years you know right get get people to think that if we don't change it like that was one of the things that greta thurnberg said five years ago that we'll all be dead in okay, five well, years well it's five years later yeah. and we're not all dead so you definitely are wrong and you're yeah. 16 so yeah. why are they flying you out to ukraine <laughs> like what's going on yeah. so there's these so many of these fucking social distractions that are in our face all day long about everything 
And I feel like sometimes that's what I feel like about Supreme Court rulings. We're going to take away Roe v. Wade. And everybody's like, what the fuck? What? Yeah. What? And that's another one. Yeah. And then that one becomes a thing that people identify as the most important problem that they have to solve. And while, while all this is going on, money's getting moved around. Decisions are getting made. Yeah. And it's a brilliant cover for wild shit. Yeah, because uh, all you have to do ever really is uh, is follow the money on anything. Yeah. And you see what's actually happening, and everything else is a distraction to that. It's all spiritual and psychological warfare. It's all for one agenda. You know, all this Black Lives Matter, ABCs, trans movements. You know, even over here in Ireland, by the 10th of March, they're looking to remove the name woman, the name mother, and the name family. Um, You know... It's all aimed at one thing, and that's for control. They don't Look at this, what they've done here to smarten up the streets of abandoned buildings. Over there, you can see that house obviously abandoned, number 66. And here's abandoned too, and I thought actually it was some blinds in a window, but it's not, it's a picture of blinds in a window. And look at this. It's not a real door. It's a picture of a door. I suppose the council want to kind of make the place look a bit better. And more up here. Look up here. This is so freaky. The council, I suppose, to make the place look better, have put these fake windows and fake doors on the buildings so it doesn't look totally fucking derelict and abandoned. Look at this. That's not a curtain, that's a picture of a curtain. The UK taking a page out of Kim Jong-un's book. But you know what, as a taxpayer, how about this? How about you fix those houses up? The people who are homeless in the street, how about you go ahead, prioritise them, put them on top of the list, actually put them into houses, give them an actual life, and let them live for once. How about that? Everybody's knowing I'm getting my eyes checked. Are you today? Yeah. Okay. okay. No, but if I move it to the side, watch. Do you yeah. guys see that? So I do want you to see the specialist real quick so soon, see like okay. within the next week or and that's two. that's not normal? Yeah. I'm going to put a one drop into each eye right now. We're going to see if this, we're going to put the drop in, okay. wait about 10 minutes, take the eye pressure again, see if that helps. Okay. Turn your eye around. Look up at the light. Oh, look at why. Oh, shit. You're gonna trip when you see this. Look at it. <laughs> this is a prime example of why you should always read your terms of agreement before you sign your soul over. If weird, strange, creepy, mysterious, and conspiracy clips is your kind of thing, then go ahead and smash that subscribe button. If you can see a hot air balloon, you're left brained. If you can see a jellyfish, you're right. What happens if you see motherfucking Snoop Dogg? I see Snoop. Where's that coming from? Yeah, I don't know what kind of brain he has, but I don't see no jellyfish and I don't see no hot air balloon. All I see is Snoop Dogg. So if Obama really believed that the ocean was rising and we're all going to be underwater in 10 years, why did he just buy a $20 million waterfront home on Martha's Vineyard? Hmm. It's so then he can recover most of his losses through an insurance claim once the sea levels rise and the floods his house. I mean, why else would it be? You know, it wouldn't be because ocean rising doesn't exist. Because, you know, you would be a conspiracy theorist if that was the case, wouldn't you? Well, the point is, how can they project holograms of that size? Here, that, and therein lies the problem, because people are, uh, when you see hologram, they're thinking of a Walt Disney little pixie dancing around in a little um, uh, darkness area. Uh, that's all they know about holograms. They don't know that 20 years ago, uh, we could project a hologram uh, with uh, heat, uh, noise, light, speed, anything we wanted, anywhere. And uh, <clears throat> we use that on uh, the pr right now. The television industry is ready uh, to bring out uh, television uh, quality.
programs that you could put right on your desk. And you have a little uh, little thing here. It, you can raise it up like this. I mean, you can enlarge it. Uh, you can bring it down to small. You can move it over there. You can move it over there. This is a dictator's wet dream. Think about it. It's a propaganda device. You're out there walking your dog at 5 o'clock in the evening. Next thing, your holographic TV whoosh, sprouting up in front of you, feeding you all this propaganda. You try to look away from it, but it's following your peripheral. You can't hide it. You can't put it away. You can't do anything other than just look at it and hear all the propaganda being fed to you. And if that's not even worse for you, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, you're asleep. Uh, don't think so. No. Whew. Propaganda TV adds you again 24 7. How about that? Nate Murphy. 1968 on BBC. This is a year before the fake moon landing. They've told everybody. They relieve themselves of their karmic responsibility. Because if you tell people and you make it available, you're not trapping people. It's consent. This wasn't made by a bunch of truthers. This is the fucking BBC. Told you this. You're going to make this happen. No. We're going to make models much cheaper and we photograph the models. Fake news reels. Fake news reels. For the past 10 years, people have been looking at our fake news reels and listening to our fake commentary. And they accept it for the truth. And you can do it. Stop 100 people in the street. How many of them have actually seen a missile or a satellite? They that they're just told they exist and they believe it. You didn't really believe there were all these things whizzing about up there, did you? Uh, Sputniks and rockets. <laughs> Astronauts crossing their legs for eight days. How long has this been going on? Since Hiroshima. And, and, and the H-bomb, you mean, that doesn't work either? Right. Dirty. Very, very. What was your first reaction? Relief. Oh, yes. Yes, it has to be. You say you can put out what pictures you like on television. Doesn't anybody try to stop you? No, nobody wants to. 99.386% of the population wouldn't believe this conversation. And the rest are working for us. They're the top minds, the really responsible people. Scare an ostrich, and buries its head in the sand. You scare a hedgehog, it rolls itself up into a ball. When a woman's frightened, she goes out and buys herself a cat. You mean you scare us so that we'll buy them? So that, so that money moves quicker, production moves up? We don't say scare when we talk about human beings. We say uh, threaten them emotionally. And there are all sorts of ways, but not just the big ones like the hydrogen bomb. Overcrowd them a little with bad planning. Sell them too many motor cars. Anything to keep them a little bit removed from reality. Nowadays, people don't work for money. They work for the idea of money. They don't even love for love. They love for the idea of love. They only hate for the idea of hate. It took us five years to find a non-addictive drug, one we could pay off against the hard drugs. LSD. You marked it there. Oh, yes, of course. And for a very good reason. Some of these protest movements were getting a little bit too close to the bar. LSD gave them nice little hallucinations. Made them talk like three-year-olds. <laughs> Throw flowers at policemen. Politicians are easy to control. The grosser mentality boys who like to be photographed getting in and out of Daimler's and Whitehall. They come right at the bottom of our organization. A few rungs up the ladder, there are the people in the top secret factories. Just those in a position to know they're making weapons that don't really work. Well, there must come a time when somebody wants to use one of those weapons. I mean, somebody is standing there with a finger on the button. Well, that's the beauty of it. Nobody presses the button. Just who the hell are you? It's obvious, isn't it? Just a few. Just very few of the top people in communications in every major country in the world.
So what percentage of you believe this was an actual conversation and that it wasn't AI? Like for me, I couldn't care if it's fact or cap. The way I look at it is the guy spoke a lot of truth here and I really do believe a lot of things he said is true for sure. But let me know what you guys think. A brainwashing job on them over the centuries and especially the last few hundred years. I, we just brainwash them completely. They believe anything we tell them. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, we have a lot of fun around Passover where we steal the children. And, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, I know you know because I've heard it on your show before. I mean, we steal 100 to 300,000 children a year just here in this country. And we drain the blood and we mix it with a Passover bread. And then we throw the bodies into the slaughterhouses that we own. And we grind up all the bodies and the sausage and the hamburger. McDonald's is one of our favorite outlets. And uh, the people, they eat up for breakfast. They eat up their children for lunch. And, uh, you know, as Jews, you know, we got to uh, we gotta do what we do. The, the, the most important thing to remember between you, Pastor Wickstrom, and me, Rabbi Haiti Finkelstein of New York, that... We both have two fathers, and so that's why we look at the world in two different ways. And we know that there's a massive collision that's going to take place between two forces, don't we? Well, that's what your book says. Our book says that we're going to take over the world. Well, I look at you. You're doing a pretty good job right now. Yes, you've done a pretty good job, but you know there's quite an awakening coming. This was definitely one of the most unsettling clips I ever listened to whenever I first woke up many years ago. I mean, I think it was just the way he approached it, his demeanor about it, how he was so calm and just everything about it was just unsettling. And even now, I still kind of feel that way, to be honest. Ultra processed food Listen. can link to more than 30 illnesses. According to a study in the British Medical Journal, mass-produced products such as ready meals, sugary cereal and chocolate bars are linked to conditions such as diabetes, cancer, and even mental health disorders. Do you think the Prince of Wales has condemned on the news? There you go. Don't need to say anything else. So the question you've got to ask yourself here is if the government really cared about you, about your health, about your well-being and the well-being of others, then why would they still allow processed and ultra-processed foods to be consumed knowing that they cause, you know, cancer, other health conditions as well as mental health well-being as well and it's a simple answer to that because they obviously just don't care they don't care it's just as simple as that that's it for today guys i hope you enjoyed the show i apologize that i haven't been as active as i would normally be over the past month or so but i will be resuming as normal pretty soon and um, but thanks for sticking with me guys and for those of you who haven't yet go ahead and smash that subscribe button and that like button and until the next video guys please look after yourselves stay safe stay healthy and i'll see you then